Welcome to this lecture on pulmonary surfactant and its role in the respiratory system. After this lecture, you will be able to describe the composition of surfactant, describe the function of surfactant in lungs, and also you will be able to describe surfactant pathology in infant respiratory distress syndrome. Firstly, we will have a little review of the structure of the alveolus and its function. The alveolus facilitates gas exchange between the lungs and the systemic circuit of the body. There are capillaries which surround the alveolus and the gas exchange occurs through diffusion. The oxygen in the alveolus from the inspired air is going to travel to the capillaries and the carbon dioxide from the capillaries is going to diffuse into the alveolus and it's going to expire. The structure of the alveolus is pretty straightforward. We have two types of cells that make up the alveolus. The alveolar type 1 cell is going to be a squamous epithelial cell and it facilitates the gas exchange. Alveolar type 2 cells are cuboidal epithelial cells, and these cells are responsible for making surfactant. There are also immune cells in the alveolus. Uh, one in particular is the alveolar macrophage, which is responsible for getting rid of pathogens. Elastin fibers also make up the alveolus, which gives it its elastic pr properties. Surfactant is composed of a complex mixture of proteins and lipids. Uh, 40 to 50 percent of surfactant is made of dipalmatyl phosphatidylcholine, or DPPC for short. 10 percent is made of proteins called surfactant proteins, and there are uh, four types, A through D. 20 to 25 percent of surfactant is composed of unsaturated phosphatidylcholines. 10% is made of phosphatidylglycerol. So what does surfactant do? So surfactant is going to actually interdisperse between the uh, water molecules in the alveolus, um, and it's actually going to reduce the surface tension uh, created by the water. So in doing that, it's actually going to prevent the collapsing of the alveoli into itself. So there's another equation uh, called uh, the law of Laplace, uh, or the equation is re uh, representing the law of Laplace. And this equation is showing you the relationship between the inward pressure in the alveolus uh, and two other variables, which is surface tension and the radius of the alveolus. Um, so the inward pressure is actually uh, inversely related to the radius, while it's directly related to the surface tension. So if you look at the equation right here, that is why the surface tension variable is on the numerator and the radius variable is on the denominator because it's inversely related to the inward pressure, P. So an interesting fact is that the smaller alveolus, um, when connected to a terminal bronchial, um, as you can see, there's a larger alveolus and a smaller alveolus. Um, so the smaller alveolus is going to uh, produce actually more or surfactant or it has surfactant that's actually more compacted um, and this is actually going to help reduce surface tension more and that makes sense because the smaller alveolus uh, has a smaller radius so it's actually going to increase the inward pressure so in in order to uh, prevent the collapsing of the smaller alveolus, um, the, the um, increased uh, surf surfactant density um, is going to help compensate for that. So next we're going to talk about 
uh, a specific disease called infant respiratory distress syndrome. So infant respiratory distress syndrome occurs in preterm birth. Uh, so preterm infants, um, which are before 20 week, 28 weeks old. Um, so surfactant production usually occurs between the age of week 26 to the time of birth. Uh, so it makes sense that these, um, these infants before, that are born before 28 weeks are going to have a lesser amount of surfactant than if the infant was to be born uh, normally. Um, so the infant respiratory distress, distress syndrome can actually develop into another um, condition called bronchopulmonary dysplasia. And that's a very serious issue because uh, bronchopulmonary dysplasia is going to be the fibrosis of your alveoli, um, and it's going to make them less elastic, um, which is going to make the alveoli uh, less inclined for gas exchange, and that's going to result in a severe, um, severe retardation of gas exchange in um, these preterm uh, infants. So, uh, in a study, uh, they observed that the surfactant storage pool or the amount of surfactant is approximately 100 milli milligrams per kilogram uh, in normal infants while in preterm infants um, it is going to be four to five milligrams per kilogram um, and that's a that's a very small amount compared to the normal 100. so what are the treatments of infant respiratory distress syndrome um, so some of the treatments uh, include something called continuous positive airway pressure or CPAP, which actually uh, decrease, uh, decreases the rate at which BPD, bronchopulmonary dysplasia, occurs or develops. Um, also, there is a method or procedure called INSURE, uh, which is a, an abbreviation for intubate, surfactant, extubate. Um, so in, in the insure procedure, what they do is they, um, they get an alternative surfactant source from an animal, such as a cow or a pig, um, and they uh, actually donate that to the preterm infant. Um, so during intubation of the infant, the surfactant is um, administered to the infant, then immediately after that, um, the infant is extubated and um, placed on CPAP. Uh, but it was shown that infants who underwent the insure procedure uh, were actually ventilated for a longer period of time. Um, and this was due to um, the, the, uh, the intubation actually causing some damage in the lungs. So uh, the the preterm uh, the preterm infants, 60 percent of them who are going through the insure procedure actually stayed on uh, stayed on intubation. They never were extubated. Uh, so sixty percent. So the insure procedure was not as effective. Um, just trying that initially. Um, so. So it was concluded in this study that it's better to start with CPAP in the delivery room and um, transition into intubation and administration of surfactant if the infant showed signs of respiratory distress syndrome. Um, and so the ideal uh, the ideal method was to actually start with CPAP first. So um, the last point is, is that uh, surfactant, which is administered earlier after birth, actually increased 
the chances of the infant surviving and also reduced um, development of BPD. So um, specifically, less than two hours after birth. So if, if the infant was given um, the surfactant less than two hours after the birth um, versus uh, two hours after the birth, um, that was um, tied to a reduced chance of getting BPD and dying. So in another study, they actually studied the differences or the effectiveness of uh, surfactant that was extracted from cows versus pigs. So the surfactant that was uh, extracted from cows was called uh, what was a baractant, and the surfactant. Uh, uh, extracted from pigs was called peractant. So in this study, around 293 preterm infants were um, given either um, two different concentrations of uh, peractant or one concentration of baractant, which is from the cow. Um, so why did they have um, two different concentrations of peractin. So as you can see here, 100 uh, milligrams per kilogram versus 200 milligrams per kilogram for peractin. And another group, 98 infants received 100 milligrams per kilogram of peractin. This was because the higher concentration of peractin was too big um, of a bolus for the infants to actually um, take in because the infant's uh, respiratory tracts were too small. Um, so uh, they could not give a higher concentration of baractin. Um, but the results showed that actually the, the baractin, the baractin from the pig uh, was actually much more effective than the baractin from the cow. Um, so, uh, Firstly, because uh, we, we could give a higher concentration, 200 milligrams per kilogram of peractin alpha um, versus the peractin group, but also the 100 milligrams per kilogram, the lower concentration of the peractin alpha group um, actually was, uh, the results were better for that group as well. Um, so this uh, study showed and proved that. So after this lecture, you learn that surfactant is essential for the proper functioning of the lungs by reducing surface tension in the alveoli and therefore keeping the alveoli inflated. Also, you learn that surfactant is made of several proteins and lipids, which give it the ability to reduce the surface tension of water by interdispersing between them and uh, reducing the surface tension. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.